Welcome to the Worship Center uh, online service. I, I pray that this will be a, a meaningful thing for you and that, uh, that you'll really get something out of this. You know, just because we can't meet physically in these times, it doesn't mean that we can't meet emotionally and spiritually. So uh, that's my prayer for you this morning, for all of us really, is that we come together emotionally and spiritually. Uh, Pastor Terrence Brailsford is gonna give us a great word in just a minute. Uh, but first, I have a few announcements that I want to cover. So first off, our Wednesday night Bible study is called Worship You. And as chance would have it, we just started a new course. It's called Why I Believe. It's uh, straight answers to honest questions about God, the Bible, and Christianity. It's, uh, if you think about it, it's a really timely course. There's a lot of things going on. A lot of people have questions. Um, we have questions. People approach us with questions. So this is an opportunity for us to learn uh, not only some answers to those questions, but ways to share those answers with other people. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really powerful, uh, meaningful course for this time for us. If you go to our website, you can register there. You can also scroll down a little further and have the opportunity to purchase a book. Uh, you go into another section and there's a thing that says uh, tickets, get tickets. That's really the book. Uh, so do that. Join us on Wednesday nights. It is a live interactive Bible study. Uh, you see the teacher, you get to ask questions, your voice is heard. It's all in real time. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty powerful. And you know what? The unique thing about right now is there's no traffic to make it to the class. You don't have to worry, most of us don't have to worry about schedule conflicts or babysitters. Uh, transportation, you log on, you're in the class right in your home. So it's a, it's a really a great time to, to leverage what's going on and to learn more uh, about God, the Bible, and Christianity. So we'll see you on Wednesday night. Uh, secondly, we have another opportunity to come together as a body weekly on Thursdays. Uh, we have a, a prayer line every Thursday from 7 to 8 o'clock. And there's a phone number on the website again. All you do is dial in. You submit your prayer requests. You pray with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It is a way for us to stay connected with each other, but more importantly, to stay connected with our God, right? And you know that he hears our prayers all the time. So go to the website, get the phone number. All you do is dial in. No access codes, nothing like that. It's very easy. Uh, and join us on Thursday night uh, for the prayer line. We have another opportunity uh, to join in prayer every Sunday morning at uh, 9 a.m. It's our pre-service prayer. We come together. It's for everybody. It's for you. It's for all your friends, anybody that wants to join us on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Um, you call in, and we really we pray together. We, we commit this service to the Lord, ask for his help, uh, to reach as many people as possible. And it's just, it's a way to get all, to get amped up and excited about uh, what we're doing here uh, and what we're doing for the Lord, what he's doing for us. So nine o'clock Sunday mornings, please, uh, please think about joining us uh, for the pre-service prayer. And then finally, we have a food pantry here at the worship center. Uh, we've had it for a long time, but you know, in many cases, food pantries have kind of come to the forefront. Uh, because there's a lot of people in need. If you find yourself in that place of need, don't hesitate to call the church and uh, we can get you hooked up. The food pantry is stocked and ready to go. If by chance you're not in need uh, and are, are blessed and you can maybe give to the food pantry, you can either give groceries or you can give monetary donations. We can do the shopping. Either way, uh, the, the pantry won't, won't stay stacked for, stocked forever, right? So think about donating or think about tapping in if you need to. Uh, the food pantry is always there, okay? So finally, all the information about all these things, uh, it's all on our website. Our website is www.worshipcentered.org. Uh, you can go there, you can find out the details on all these things I just talked about and really a lot more about the church. It's a great website. So if you haven't been there, visit it and you can get some information. Uh, that's all I have for now. I just pray that you're blessed through this service. Thanks.
Good morning. Well, it's giving time. This is a time in our service when we allow our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ to supersede what our mind and our situation is dictating to us. We should be honored to give back to a God who's given so, so much to us. In this time when the world says this is a time of uncertainty, well, we understand as believers this is a time where God will show his hand mightily because he is a God of all sufficiency, a God who shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. If you have your Bible, I just want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 8, and it reads as, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which so if bountifully shall reap also bountifully. If every man, as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able, remember he's able, to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So what I wanna to say to you this morning, let you purpose in your heart to give the way God has given to us because he's given much to us. If you have your envelope, which you probably don't have because you're home, I just want you to make this declaration with us. This is not a debt that I owe, but it is a seed that I sow. And I sow it in faith, expecting a harvest. Harvest come now in Jesus' name. And there's three ways that we can give. You go to our website, www.worshipcentered.org. You can go through snail mail, mail to our post office box, Worship Center, P.O. Box 969, New Baltimore, Michigan, 48047, or PayPal or Givelify. I just pray this morning that you will give. Just remember the goodness of God, the way he has blessed your life. I just thank you. I praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to the Worship Center. Listen, we're excited this morning again to talk to you. This is our 10 a.m. service. Uh, today, we really want to talk about continuity and sameness. I think uh, we all want to have uh, a continuity in our lives um, where we have uh, where we understand where things are going to take place that day. That we just know that, you know, we want to have some sameness, some some uniformity in our lives. And when we tend to not have that uniformity in our lives and we have a lot of chaos and things going on, it tends to really cause us um, a lot of heartache, a lot of unnecessary issues, a lot of unnecessary stress. So this morning, if you just kind of bear with me this morning, I got about maybe four bullet comments that I want, four truths uh, from the scripture that I really want to share with you from my heart. Just kind of slow this down and walk with you a little bit, just to kind of get us to understand about how God operates in the midst of our situations and how God operates in the midst of our storms. And so um, if you have a pencil and a piece of paper, I would ask that you take this opportunity to grab that. Just kind of, you know, you know, bless yourself because it's important that we write some of these truths down. So that way we can either A, go back and restudy them or either B, just be able to share them with someone else. And so once you grab those, uh, I want you to just dial right back in and we'll be ready to go, right? So let's just begin here really quick. And so one scripture I have for your mind today uh, is found in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8. It's a well-known passage of scripture. You guys all know it well. And it reads thus as follows. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8. And it reads as follows. It says, Jesus Christ is the same uh, yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the first foundational truth that I want to lay down for you is, is simply this. Every circumstance carries with it a different set of challenges. Every circumstance carries with it a different set of challenges. So conversely speaking, if you were to have a financial problem in your life, uh, and then you have a relationship problem in your life, uh, you wouldn't handle the relationship issue the way you would handle the financial issue. So the financial issue would present to you a different set of challenges. Like the financial issue would kind of show you, you know, maybe where you spent money and uh, where you were a poor spender. Uh, maybe you had a, you were poor at budgeting. Uh, maybe you was just loaning all your families and friends money. Some y'all know y'all know we do do those things, or you know you just weren't a good steward, right? 
Whereas on the relationship side, maybe you just didn't spend a lot of quality time with your family. Uh, maybe you did a, you know, a bunch of other things. So, but the problems from the relationship and the problems from the financial issue, you, you can't handle those two issues the same. Each one is going to require you to come up with a set of problem solving skills to figure out what happened in that particular situation. So, uh, and so what I want to talk to you today about is how each one of those challenges though, when you take a look at it, each one of those challenges, although they present a different, each one of those circumstances present a different challenge, each challenge is designed to bring a, a bigger picture or a bigger result at the end. So for instance, let me share this with you and see if I can kind of bring this into, uh, into its proper perspective. Um, when I was in the Army, and I spent some time in the Army, I spent close to, you know, 21 years in the Army, uh, we had what was called circuit training. And I think a lot of uh, rehabilitation places now, and I think a lot of gyms, and I think a lot of uh, 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 fitness gurus uh, still practice it. It's called, it's called circuit training. And what you do in circuit training is they'll set up 10, you know, five or 10 different stations. It's kind of like going through an obstacle course. Um, they'll set up five or 10 different stations, and at each station, um, there will be a sign or there will be a type of exercise there that they want you to perform. And so when you get to station number one, they may ask you to do sit-ups at station number one. So for, you know, maybe one to two minutes while you're at station number one, you'll do sit-ups. And then they'll either blow a whistle or there'll be a timer there or there'll be a, a, a teacher or instructor that say, okay, time up, go to the next station. So when you leave that station, you'll go to the next station and then you'll maybe at that station, You'll do push-ups, and then after, you know, then you'll leave that. You'll stay there for maybe 30 seconds or a minute, however long they have the station designed to operate. Then you'll go some way to another station, and maybe you'll do uh, some cardio where you'll do running in place or something to that effect. But while each one of those stations, the, the point that I would need you to, 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 what I'm trying to get across is that each one of those stations presents a different challenge for your physical body. So, for instance, when you get to the first station and you're doing ab, when you're doing push-ups, that's going to present challenges for growth for your core. If you get to the next station and you're doing push-ups, that's going to present challenges for the growth of your pectoral muscles and even your triceps. And then if you get to the next station, you have to ride a bicycle or run in place, that's going to present challenges for your cardio. But at the end of the day, if you complete all the circuit training, you have to understand that each challenge at each station, while it was yet designed to individually target a particular uh, area of your body, it has produced a total growth in your entire body. Does, does that make sense to you? I believe it does. And so what you have to understand, so just like every day, and every day in your situations and your circumstances, each one's gonna present a different challenge, but at the end of the day, each one is, going to, is, is targeted at bringing uh, to total growth in your in your whole life okay so if you ever went to the gym and if all you did was took weights and you lift lift the weights with your with your right arm and all you did was lift weights with your right arm your right arm would be bigger than your left arm right or if you did it with your left arm it would be bigger than your right arm or if you just did sit-ups right so if you just concentrated on one particular area that would be the only area that grows but that's not how our everyday, um, uh, uh, everyday situations and circumstances work for us. So for instance, on Monday, you may have a challenge on Monday. You may wake up again and you may have another challenge on Tuesday. And then you may have a different challenge on Wednesday or another challenge on Thursday. But if you go back and you take a look at those, each one of those challenges, while they may have been uh, unique or, 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 or specific to a certain uh, situation, you know, to a certain uh, area of your life, they're each designed to build you and make you better in, in every area and every aspect of your life. So what God is doing, but you have to also understand that in the midst of those situations and circumstances, while they yet present different challenges for you every day, God remains the same. And so he doesn't change in the midst of the situation or circumstance. And we'll address that piece later on as we continue to move through this teaching this morning about, you know, the same God, okay? So understand that, okay, so understand that when you're doing the circuit training, right, the circuit training is just an illustration or an example that your different situations and circumstances and crises that you're experiencing in your life, 
Don't fret over them. Don't get upset and don't lose your mind and don't get uh, bent out of shape and asking why you're going through certain things and why all these things are happening. It could be that those situations or circumstances are, are taking place because what God is trying to do is build more than one area in your life. Now, the second thing I want to share with you this morning, too, is the second bullet I would ask that you will write this bullet down, too, is simply this. Though our circumstances present different challenges, as I've mentioned earlier, they do. Uh, though our circumstances present different challenges, God, however, he remains the same in the circumstances. He, God, uses the circumstances we face to bring revelation in our lives. So, in other words, so um, as we move through life and as we experience uh, certain problems and as we experience certain situations, God takes uh, his revelatory ability through the Holy Spirit to reveal to us who he is in that situation. The number one priority of God in every situation and every circumstance is simply this, to reveal to you who he is and to reveal to you what he can do. So for instance, let's take, let's, let's go back a little bit. You would have, most of us would have never, ever, ever uh, known or experienced the fact that God was a healer until we got sick. And so once the situation or circumstance came up in our lives to where we were sick, then we begin to believe that he was a healer. And then when God revealed his supernatural healing ability to us through that situation or circumstance, now, whenever we begin to go forward in our lives, when the situation comes up now that, you know, maybe we need healing in our lives again, we can automatically fall back to that previous experience and say, well, God revealed to me through that circumstance that he was a healer. Surely he can heal me again. And so each circumstance is designed to reveal another aspect of God. It's, another, it's an opportunity for us to get another glimpse of his glory and another glimpse of his power. You probably would have never known that God, was, uh, that, that God could, so could supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory until you got to the point one day where you were low on money, you didn't have gas for your car, um, you didn't have food in your house or whatever the case may be, and then all of a sudden uh, someone picks up your, your your phone rings and this is this individual who has no knowledge of what's going on in your life and just says hey listen I just want to sow a seed into your life I just want to tell you about you know uh, that much much I love you I want to take you out and go take you out and go grocery shopping and buy you a ton of groceries or whatever the case may be well through that through that particular situation and circumstance God revealed to you that he was Jehovah Jireh your provider so the situation and circumstances when they uh, when they come into our lives, no matter how different they may be and no matter what the situ or no matter what the challenges are, through each one of those challenges, God is going to reveal to you another level of who he is or give you more insight to what he can do and what he wants to do in your life. And that's the unique thing about God. That's the unique thing about God, right? So we get and we get so we get um, so we get this uh, a glimpse of him and through situations and circumstances. Because when we get into a, a problem, uh, what God wants us to do is to stay focused on him, okay? And not to, and, and not to look anywhere else. And so, so well, be excited. Don't worry about uh, the fact that you may think that every day uh, you got a new problem that comes up. Don't look at it that way. Don't look at it that you got a new problem. Look at it this way. Look at it that you have a new opportunity to learn something about God. Look at it this way. Just because you might have, uh, you may, you know, on Monday you go to work and you and your coworker y'all fall out, or maybe 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 you go to work and uh, they give you ten more, they give you ten more projects to do than they did yesterday, and then now all of a sudden you're saying, I don't think I can do uh, ten more problems than I can do yesterday. Don't look at the don't look at the obstacle. Look at the opportunity for God to express to you His greatness in the midst of this situation and circumstance. So storms are going to come in your life. Situations and circumstances, they're going to come in your life. Whether they be self-induced, we cause them, or whether they be uh, just, just through someone else or, just, or whatever the case may be, they're going to come. And, and there's nothing you can do about them. But what you can, the, the, the greatest thing that we can do is simply always ask God and say, God, what are you trying to show me at this present point in time 
in my life through this situation or through this circumstance because that's ultimately what I want to know because ultimately I want to grow spiritually, okay? So that's the second point that I want to share with you. Now let me share this third point with you. I, I, I hope that you can grasp this. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's very, it's very easy. So let's go back and recap real quick before we hit number three. Number one is, remember this, every circumstance carries with it a different set of challenges. Every circumstance carries with it a different set of challenges. Number two, though our circumstance presents challenges, um, God, however, remains the same in the circumstance. He, God, uses the circumstances we face to bring uh, revelation knowledge into our lives. And let me give, let me, let me take something back. Let me, let me recap here really quick on the second one. I just want to say something to you that the reason why God remains the same in the situation or circumstances is because the situation or circumstance it doesn't move him. And if God was to change, if God, if every situation and circumstance changed God then that means that the situations and circumstances that we are experiencing or going through would be in control of God. They would be higher than God, but that's not the case. The Bible says that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. And so he's seated in heavenly places. The Bible declares that the, the, um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwelleth therein. So that speaks to God's sovereignty and it speaks to God's authority. It really speaks to God's power and his existence that God is totally in control. He is not going to allow, he's not going to allow situations, circumstances to move him because he can simply speak a word and change the situation and the circumstance, okay? So let's go to number three and let's get to the third bullet here. And, um, and we're just moving along. Let's get to this third bullet. And it says this, it says, so, it says, so while circumstances move us, they don't move God. God is moved by faith. So while our circumstances move us, they don't move God. God is moved by faith, okay? So in Mark uh, 4, 37 to 40, I want to read this to you, and let's see if we can kind of pull another bit of another truth from this passage of Scripture, something that we can really uh, wrap our teeth around in this tough and pandemic time, but not only just in this tough time for, for this pandemic, but something that we can just uh, continue as a life principles that we can continue to apply to our lives. So that way, uh, I think once we understand that our situations and circumstances are, are going to bring us challenges, but yet when we look at the God we serve, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that he's never lost a case, that he's always going to be on our side, that his promises are yes and amen in our lives, I think that reduces a lot of the stress or the worry when problems do arise in our lives because now we know without a shadow of a doubt that if there is a need, we know that he's Jehovah Jireh. And so let's read this passage of scripture and let's see what it says here in th uh, Mark 4, 37 to 40. And so here's what it says. And it says, And there arose a great storm uh, of wind, and the waves beat upon the sea uh, so that it was now full. And he, Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, but he was asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and he rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have, watch this, he said, how is it that you have no faith? So nothing, so, uh, nothing will grow you like hard times. That's why God chooses the hard way. That's why God chooses the hard way to bless us sometimes. Or that's why he chooses the hard way. Because when God does things, see, God doesn't do things the easy way. God does things the hard way. And so when he does things the hard way, it's because at the end of the day, you and I won't be able to give anybody any credit for it other than him because you'll know without a shadow of a doubt that there is no one but God that could have made that, could have brought that particular solution to pass. And so 
when you look at this passage of scripture, here's what you see. You see the situations and circumstance on this side, and then on the other, and then on the other hand, and then on the other hand, you see, on the other hand, you see the the the, 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 the disciples, uh, Jesus asked them about, about, about their faith. So the situation and circumstance, but God is asleep in the hinder part of the boat, the, the, the Bible says, until the disciples woke him up. But yet the storm was going, which lets you know that watch this, God knew there was a storm going on. And he knew that he had the power over the storm. So therefore, there was no need for him to get excited. Had the disciples put that piece into their mind, knowing that God was in control and that God had power over the storm, they probably would have been the same way too as well. But now watch this for a minute. Let's see if we can kind of connect a few dots here for a minute. So see, our situations and circumstances are natural. God doesn't operate in the natural. God operates in the supernatural. And so in order for us to, to, to be changed in our, to, in our situations and circumstances, we have to exercise faith. Faith moves us into the supernatural is what our faith does. And so what happens is, and so what God wants us to do is say, no, God is saying, listen, I understand that you're having a tough time or you may think that this is a tough time. But what God is saying, if you don't look at this in the natural and allow the situation and the circumstance to change you, but yet look at it in the, the, the supernatural with your spiritual eye and exercise your faith. He said, because your faith is what is going to generate me to move, not the situation or circumstance, because God's moved by faith. So my faith generates God to move. And then when God moves on my behalf in the middle of a situation or circumstance, what begins to happen is now I can receive the blessing and I have a supernatural, uh, this, this, there is this supernatural miracle that takes place. It doesn't take place because, because I'm over here crying and complaining. It takes place because what I decided to do was to say, God, I'm going to release my faith in the midst of this storm and trust you. And in the midst of that storm, when I begin to trust him, then he begins to move on my behalf. And then he begins to reveal unto me whatever it is that I need to, whatever it is that I need to be doing to, 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 to move through, to move through, uh, to move through the particular problem. So, so, so when God reveals to us in the middle of a situation and a circumstance, Here's what his revelation does for us. What his revelation does for us is simply this. It shows us a problem. And then at the same time, we see the problem. So the situation, the situation and circumstance shows us a problem. But God's revelation inside of the situation or circumstance shows us the solution. So now we have problem and we have solution. And so what God wants to do is take the problem of the situation and circumstance, reveal unto us who he is and what he can do, and then bring us to solution. And then once he brings us to solution, he brings us to spiritual growth. He brings us to freedom. He brings us to healing. He brings us to deliverance. And he brings us to a place in our lives that he wants us to grow. All right. If you listen, say amen. Amen. And I heard you. And so let me let me say this to you. Um, uh, it's not, nothing will grow you like hard times, okay? Nothing will grow you like hard times. So don't be afraid when tough times come. Understand this. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So if he, if he was with you in an earlier tough time, a previous tough time on Monday, and the day is Tuesday and you need him to be there, he's going to be there again because, again, I keep, again what I'm trying to reiterate to you is simply this. He's not afraid of your situations and circumstance. He's not afraid of your problems because he's bigger than any situation. He's bigger than any circumstance. He's bigger than any problem and he's bigger than any, than any mountain. He, he, any, anything that's going on in your life, God is bigger than that. And guess what, saints of God? Let me share this with you. Nothing takes him by surprise. And this is the reason why he, 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 you know, he, he, he stays the same. He has to stay the same because if he changes, then he loses my trust. But if he stays the same, he gains my trust and he gains my ability to believe in him because I know that without a shadow of a doubt, no matter where I go, my God is going to still be the same. 
He remains the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And let me share this with you. He remains the same because watch this. His power, it wasn't given to him by anybody. It's always been his power. His ability to create wasn't given to him by anybody. It's always been his ability to create. And because no one gave him power and no one gave him the ability to do anything and he doesn't have to ask us for anything, therefore, he doesn't have to rely on us for anything. He's just simply God all by himself and he can do what he can do, what only he can do. So let me share one more bullet point with you and, uh, and, 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 and we're almost home, okay? Uh, I'm connected to God. I'm, I'm not connected to God by my circumstances. I'm connected to God by my faith. And I just wanted to reiterate that to you because here's the reason why. Faith brings, listen closely, saints of God, what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you. Faith brings continuity and it brings sameness and oneness into my life. And so if I'm if 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 I allowed my circumstances and situations uh, and the challenges of those to change me, then I would be all over the place and I wouldn't know really what to do. But if I just believe and I place my faith in God, what my faith does, here's what my faith says. My faith says, God, here's what your word says about the situation. So I'm going to believe what your word says about this situation. And so because I believe what your word says about this situation, I'm saying, God, about this situation, the same thing you're saying about it. And then, God, because you don't change, when I release my faith to trust you, now I'm bringing... That, uh, I'm bringing your ability to not change and remain the same. I'm bringing that character into my life. And so now I don't have to, I can say to myself, because I've released my faith and now I have that same character operating in my life, I'm not going to change and I'm not going to allow the situation and circumstance to change me. This is why people look at you sometimes, and I know people do it often all the time. Sometimes people look at you sometimes in the midst of the turmoil that's going on in your life, and they're trying to figure out why you're making it through, and they're not making it through. Sometimes people are even angry or upset with you that you have already come through or come out of something that they're still struggling with. And so other than you, and what you have to do is you have to understand the reason why you do those things is because your faith has been placed in a God who cannot change. He said, I am the Lord God who changeth not. And so when you bring that kind of continuity and you bring that kind of, of sameness and oneness into your life, it takes it takes it takes your life and it brings you and keeps you from waffling and waving with every wind of doctrine and every rumor that you hear, you don't have to worry about those things because your faith has been rooted and grounded in the word of God. And it brings sameness and continuity in your life. How many of you want that in your life? I know I do, right? We all want that sameness. We all want to be, uh, we all want to come to a point that if the building is falling down, we can say simply this, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And so if, if we come to a place where, uh, where there's no food on our table or whatever the case may be, we can say this, my God shall supply all that I need according to his riches and glory and allow that word to permeate and do what it's going to do. Because watch this, we're not being moved by our situations or our circumstances. They are opportunities for us for learning objectives. But when we, but, but our ability to release our faith in the midst of a storm is what brings the peace and the power of God into our lives. Okay. Number, uh, and so the last thing, let me share this with you. Uh, the last bullet is this, if you can write this one down. The consistency of God is what makes him so unique. The consistency of God is what makes him so unique. See, he doesn't conform to our standards, right? We are conformed to his standards. So this is what makes God so unique. God is, he, he's so consistent. Have you ever had, I, I, I believe that we may have all had friends in, uh, in our lives. We all have friends in our lives, or maybe even we know some people now that are in our lives right now that are just totally inconsistent. You can't trust them. You can't rely on them. They're, they're, they're all over the place. And, and, and the truth be told, and listen to this, the truth be told, a lot of the stress that's going on in your own life is probably because of the, the inconsistencies in theirs. 
And we've allowed a lot of them to, and, and we have a lot of those people uh, surrounding our lives or, or, or that we've made decisions to come into relationship with. And because they're so inconsistent about doing stuff, it's causing a lot, it's causing, it's causing a lot of problems in our lives. But, but the, the thing about God, what makes God so unique is he is consistent. And that's what makes him so unique. That's what makes him stand out. You know, that's what makes him stand out for man. And watch this. That's what makes him stand out. That's what makes him stand out from 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 any other uh, so-called uh, from any other so-called deity, right? Because he is consistent, and his consistency comes from his ability to speak a word and have that word fulfilled on earth. And watch this. And no one has the power or the ability to stop whatever God says that he's going to do, he's going to do. If God says he's going to bless you, he's going to bless you. And here's the other thing that makes that, that, that that's so unique about him. His credibility is built upon his consistency. His credibility is built upon his consistency. So if you know that if you called him on Monday and he showed up on Monday, trust me when I tell you, when you're in a jam on Tuesday, he's going to show up. If you're in a jam on Wednesday, he's going to show up. If you get in a jam on Thursday, he's going to show up. It doesn't matter to him because whatever you are experiencing, it is not greater than him. It is not more powerful than him, and he has the ability to work through the situation. He has the ability to reveal to you who he is, and he has the ability to reveal to you what he can do. And then once he has the ability to reveal to you who he is and what he can do, he draws us into faith through the situation and circumstance so that way who he is and what he can do, not only is it revealed to us, but it becomes part of our lives. It brings continuity, oneness, and an increased faith in our lives and we begin to trust him at a deeper level. Uh, let me share this with you in, the, in, uh, in, uh, in, in closing, okay? God's consistency is what keeps balance, it keeps calm, it keeps peace, and it keeps assurance in our lives. So because we're connected to God, the Bible says that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so because we have this uh, connection with him, uh, because he if he is consistent and because I'm connected to him uh, by faith, then I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to be able to make it through because the, my faith says that no matter what God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can do, ever, ever ask or think. So my faith says this, my faith says that uh, it's impossible to please God, but those who come to him must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Without faith, we have, to, we have to have faith. And so faith brings all the continuity of God. It brings all of who God is into my life. And then once all that's into my life, now I have peace. Now I have calm because I know one thing. In the middle of the storm, he's in control. In the middle of the circumstance, God is in control. No matter what's going on in my life, He's in control. He's always will. He always will be in control. Why is that? He was in control 500 years ago. He's still in control now. He always will be in control. Why is that? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, I want to tell you thank you so much for fellowshipping with us today. Uh, thank you so much for, for, just, for dropping in and, and tuning in. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardons of your sins, here's what I want you to do. I want to introduce you to the Jesus Christ. The Bible says a point unto man wants to die, and then after that is the judgment. If you want to experience sameness and oneness and this continuity of Christ in your life, if, you, if you're tired of bouncing all over the place and uh, mentally going all over the place, spiritually you're all over the place, situation and circumstance got you going crazy, and you need to get rooted and grounded and get your feet on, on the ground, I want to offer you Jesus Christ today. I want to tell you that he is the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore, and he will always be the same. If you're watching, here's what I need you to do. Uh, my faith says that you're watching. My faith says that your heart has been primed and that you're ready. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into my life. Forgive me, for I am a sinner. I believe that your son died on the cross for the mission of my sins. Write, your name on, write, write my name on the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you so much, God, for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the kingdom. Of, I want to welcome you to the kingdom. I want to welcome you to the family. Here's what I need you to do. Go to our website, www.worshipcenter.org. There's plenty of resources there. Uh, there's some contact information. You can call someone for the church. Tell them you, you watched our message, you prayed the prayer of salvation, and you want to 
now get connected with the body of Christ. Or maybe you're watching in another country or another state. Um, guess what? Find a local church. Get to that church. Call that local pastor. Tell him. Say, hey, I was watching a program. I accepted Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to grow and I want to learn. I want to learn more about uh, what salvation is. And we, we pray that you get connected. Again, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we thank you so much for your charitable donation. We thank you for blessing us. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Go in peace. Go serve the Lord. And remember that every challenge, while it is different, you're going to get another glimpse of God. And it's going to bless you in the end. Amen.